This is the PFSense video part two, securing yourself. You're gonna use your PFSense router that you built and have the VPN actually run on your PFSense router. Probably the biggest question on that video in the comments, and also there's a lot of questions on the forum, a lot of requests, people are like, hey, I wanna be secure. How do I secure my internet connection? <laughs> Or the trollish version of that is, yeah, yeah, I know how to install PFSense. Show me something cool I can do with it. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to talk, this is, we're just going to talk about VPNs yes. this time. It's going to be an ongoing series, though. We're going to show you more and more stuff about how to do it with PFSense. This yep. is just VPN. Yeah, just VPN. We're going to take a look at three VPN providers that work with PFSense, two of which use OpenVPN, and I think the other one uses PPTP. Maybe they all three use OpenVPN. If you have the option, you should use OpenVPN because PPTP is not quite as secure. But uh, it's private internet access, Viper VPN, which is provided by GigaNews, and Liquid VPN. Yep. And so uh, basically you can do all of this through the GUI. And there's a bunch of guides out there, and some of the guides are older. Some of them are like, oh, you need to create a text file that has your username and password in it. And you don't really need to do that with modern PFSense, the version that we looked at in, in our video. Uh, but before we get into the nuts and bolts of how, we figured it was probably more interesting to start with the why. Yeah, and also... We're looking at three different services. We're not necessarily advocating one because we don't want you to think that we're trying to, you know, just sell you a VPN service. Although we do have relationships with these and use those affiliate links. In the <laughs> there are affiliate links in the description <laughs> below for all three of them. So, but when you are choosing a VPN, one thing, and you, it's you're never going to know for sure. You're not going to know if they're lying to you. But one thing you want to do, you want to search: Do they keep logs? Are they <laughs> logging your connection? If they're logging the IP address you're connecting to them from, you might as well not use it. Yeah. And the other thing that we want to emphasize is that if you're doing illegal shit, uh, a VPN is not going to help you. It's not necessarily even going to help you. The real yeah. point of a VPN in the context that we're talking about it is really to uh, shield yourself from advertisers and your ISP that may be spying on you and injecting crap into your internet connection. Yeah. If like... It should help with like legal letters that you're going to get from DMCA, stuff like that. Now, again, if you're doing something illegal, it's not a silver bullet, but it can obfuscate that kind of thing. You're not going to get, uh, if you're using, uh, you know, uh, Com Comcast is not going to be like, oh, we see that you're doing stuff or you've, you've hit your 200 gigabyte limit. They're not going to be able to insert anything into your web pages. Now, it's also important to note, we are setting this up at the router level. Yes. If you're... You can get these services, they'll give you apps that'll just run on your desktop, but that is not gonna secure you the way setting it up at the router level will. Yeah, so it turns out that um, with things like advanced technologies in, in your web browser, like when HTML5 was coming out and Chrome and Firefox were adding a bunch of new features to the browser, uh, there were ways to use JavaScript to have JavaScript sort of enumerate all of the IP addresses that your computer's using. And so you could get you know, the local IP addresses and the public IP addresses. And when you use VPN software on your computer, you know, one of the IP addresses returned was your VPN IP address, but it was also possible to capture your real internet IP address as well. When you're running the VPN on the router, that attack avenue, that attack vector on your individual desktop machine is no longer available. And it's difficult to accidentally leak your IP address. Now, sometimes you might not want to use a VPN. Uh, for example, Netflix just simply won't work with certain VPNs. And there might be other websites where you, or, or when you're playing internet games and stuff like that. It'll increase your latency. Now, we're not going to cover it in this video, but down the road, we're going to do another video to show you how to uh, single out services to not use the VPN via PFSense. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. It'll, certain things will go over the regular internet traffic. Certain things will go through the VPN. And it'll probably be obvious to you once you've done the nuts and bolts setup from this video, you know, just playing around in the GUI and setting some options on the NAT tab when we go over how like the network address translation and having the outbound NAT use the VPN interface instead of your ISP's WAN interface for the traffic on your LAN. Oh, look, you can create a rule. You can say, you know, this destination IP address or this source computer or whatever uses the real internet connection. So like if you've got your your fridge, you know, your smart fridge and your smart toaster, <laughs> and you want them to not use the VPN to give away your location, then you can totally do that. You can also make sure that your toaster can get updates, but it can't call home. You can do, <laughs> you know, unidirectional 
And we'll show you how to do that as well. Yeah, because think about the situation where, you know, you've got your LG Smart TV and you've registered with your LG Smart TV and you've put in your username and password. And every 30 seconds, that Smart TV is like, hey, LG, look at me. I'm over here. Ha ha. How's it going? <laughs> when you turn on your IP at the router level, the TV is going to tell LG where you are. And so your LG is going to know all of your IP addresses from the beginning of time. And so right. you probably want to put your Internet of Things things not on the VPN. So... If you haven't seen the old video about setting up PFSense, start there. If you have, we're going to go on to showing you how to set up VPN at the router level. And in the future, we're going to show you the more advanced tips on how to do more with it. Yes, you can definitely do a lot of fun stuff with that. Uh, you can even configure it at, at a software level. You can use a SOX proxy on your web browser and have the VPN off unless you actually configure SOX. It's not quite as secure. But it's definitely an option. The other thing is uh, leaks from DNS. Sometimes you see it's like, oh, your DNS server can still leak your, you know, can still leak your true IP address or whatever. Again, you configure DNS however you want on your router. You can route the DNS traffic through your ISP. You can route the DNS traffic over the VPN. You can do a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B because it's controlled at the router level. That way there's no software to install on your computer. There's no anything to worry about as far as operating system configuration. You're covered. Now, of course, the thing that we're starting with here is our fresh PFSense installation. We're just going to dive right into the web configurator and go from there. Yeah, so uh, with OpenVPN and a lot of the VPN providers, you need a certificate. And so we're going to have a trusted certificate that's created. Now, they each had a different method of getting your certificate. Uh, usually there was some kind of control panel where you logged in. Some of them had them just listed publicly. I think for private internet access, we found it publicly. Yeah. So just whatever... Uh, VPN you're going to use, there will be a different way to get this certificate. There, there's different certificates that are involved too. There's the certificate of the machine itself and the certificate that you get from the provider and the provider's own certificate that is a public certificate that is used for, you know, the actual connection. So there's some different, different things in play here. In this case, we're starting with uh, private internet access, which was the first one we set up. So here's the text file that we had that delivered our certificate. You just want to paste that in as is. Now, obviously, PIA doesn't send you the private key, so you won't have that, which is fine. You can name it whatever you want, but obviously you want to name it something that describes it. We call it ours, PIA VPN. We're also going to create an internal certificate authority. This is um, making the router a certificate authority so that the router can issue its own certificates. So instead of copying and pasting this one, obviously you want to generate it, and that's what all these settings do. The uh, different VPNs sometimes have different values they want you to use here, but we went with the standard SHA-256. And basically we're just using this for like self-signed certificates, so there's not really anything magical going on here on any of these values. It's not a real email address, don't mail them. Once we've created the certificate authority, we can use that certificate authority to also create an internal certificate that's signed by that certificate authority. Basically, the certificate authority creates a certificate and you can take that certificate and have a computer say, hey, anytime you see a certificate from this authority, trust it. So instead of trusting an individual certificate, you can trust the authority that created the certificate and any subsequent certificate that authority creates will be trusted by your computer. Now, we just, we're just using this for auth, so you don't have to do anything that elaborate with it. But you begin to start to understand how the entire public trust system is put together because this is pretty much exactly what like VeriSign and other companies did. They just created their own internal certificate. And so it's like, well, anything VeriSign made, I trust. That's really all it is. And so now we're setting up a client for the private internet access VPN. And this is of the open VPN type. So you'll just go to your open VPN setup thing in PFSense. Now the server address, again, is something that's gonna be provided by your VPN and they will have a place on their website or a control panel to let you know uh, what address to use. EIA actually offers uh, a ton of these. It depends on where geographically you wanna come out. So I think we chose uh, Texas. And that's where your IP will appear to be geolocated. So you want to put in your username and password and confirm your password. Now, older versions of PFSense 
did not have a place to put in your username and passwords. If you're looking at other tutorials online, it's like, oh, you need to create a text file and do that. No, you don't need to do that. Modern PF Sense, you can put a username and password in there. Don't, don't do it like it is in the tutorial. We noticed that some of the VPN providers on their websites, the tutorial was out of date. Now for your client certificate, you're gonna to wanna to pick the certificate that you made earlier and you wanna pick your peer certificate authority, which is PIA. Now in terms of like your compression preferences and that kind of thing, not every setting is gonna be compatible with every VPN provider. These are the settings where you gotta really pay attention to what your provider expects when you're setting up OpenVPN. Sometimes in uh, some of the configuration files they'll send you for OpenVPN, you can read the server settings that it's trying to pass with those open VPN setup files and tell how to set these settings. Yeah, just open the text file and, and look at the raw source and that's a good strategy. Well, under VPN, open VPN and clients, we've got PIA set up. Now we need to assign the interface. So just like we've got LAN and WAN interfaces, we can also assign interfaces for the VPN. And this is re really important for routing and firewall rules. So this is being set up as opt two for the open VPN interface and we'll want to enable it and also rename it. Oh yeah, gotta enable the interface and just save. Then we'll apply the changes. Sometimes you have to watch for the green box to apply your changes, just saving is not enough. So watch out for that. Then the, the important step is to go to a firewall, NAT, and outbound, and we're gonna reconfigure our outbound NAT. Now NAT stands for Network Address Translation, and it's the technology that's responsible for taking your public internet IP address and making it to where you can share it with your internal IP addresses like 192.168, whatever. By default, PFSense is gonna use your real public internet access uh, as it tries to calculate what's going on with your outbound connection. And so we wanna set it to manual outbound NAT in order to control it. Now you can edit the existing rules, which will prevent PFSense from sending any traffic out over your WAN, or you can add additional rules for more fine-grained control. In our case, we're just gonna add rules that are like the existing outbound rules, but they're gonna to correspond to the, the VPN interface that'll be for whatever VPN provider you're using as opposed to overriding the ones for the WAN. Now there's multiple sets of rules here because uh, PFSense has got to manage traffic from local host, that's 127.0.0.1, and port 500 is a special case um, for IKE traffic, and then the one that's all stars is just by default. And so this is about what it should look like. And this will let PFSense send traffic both out over your WAN interface as well as the VPN interface. And you can control which interface goes where with further firewall rules. All right, so that's private internet access. Now Viper VPN, which is provided by Giga News, is another one. And they also provide open VPN setup files. And they offer a variety of setup instructions here. So pretty much anywhere you want to set it up, they have something for it. They don't have PFSense, but it's just OpenVPN and they do have that. So you can follow that guide. Now they supply the certificate at a URL address. So just like private internet access, you just need to copy paste this and create the certificate in your PFSense setup. Yeah, the CRT file is just a text file. Just open it with Notepad++ or anything really so you can copy paste it in PFSense. This is what happens if you open it in Notepad because Notepad does not respect line endings. Don't open it in Notepad, Notepad++ for the win. Free download if you don't already have that. Or if you're on Linux, I guarantee that was not a problem for you. <laughs> Linux master race reporting in. This is the same as private internet access. You just need to create the certificate authority and trust it. In this case, the internal certificate already exists. So there's no need to do that twice. It is totally viable to run multiple VPNs at once. You can't have them turned on at the same time. Well, you could, but you'd have to be really careful with your routing rules so that certain kinds of traffic use one connection and other kinds of traffic use another VPN connection. Yeah, and we did run into a few problems with that, but uh, if you just wanted to use them for different occasions, like I want this VPN when I'm doing some things and this VPN when I do others, it's easy to do, toggle them on and off. Once again, there's hundreds of locations you can use for most of these VPNs, just wherever you want to be in the world, you use a different uh, address to connect to. So like if you wanted to change what country you were coming from, you'd have to come back to your VPN configuration and change where you're connecting. But all the other settings should remain the same. So if you have a Giga News account, your same login for Giga News is what you use for your Viper VPN. I think that's the only way to get this VPN. So if you're looking for a Usenet provider that also gives you free VPN, might be a good solution for you. You have to get the diamond pack. First rule of Usenet, don't talk about Usenet. <laughs> don't spread it around. <laughs>
second rule of using it, use a VPN. Now here we're giving it a custom option because the uh, Viper VPN setup instructed us to do so. It was in the text file, so. Now that the VPN connection is up, we need to actually route our internet traffic through that. So we're gonna come back to our interfaces and assign it to, or not, we're gonna turn off OpenVPN and turn on Viper VPN and save. Now once we do that, we have to cycle the firewall somehow because it's sort of unusual what we're doing here for the demonstration of this video. And we are using the PIA name still just for convenience, but we switched which client it's using, so. And so Los Angeles was the network that we picked. And so now it looks like we're coming from LA. Beautiful, sunny LA. Town full of fakery and insanity. <laughs> Hollywood. Everybody's fake and crazy and trying to kill you. As Lewis Black says, just shove a pencil in your eye. It's the same experience. Now, depending on the VPN provider that you have, uh, they may provide DNS for you. They may actually prevent you from using any DNS other than their own to prevent you from leaking information for your DNS. So you may need to come and configure your DNS on the DNS page to get you know, everything working as it should. Liquid, I know, does offer DNS servers to prevent that. I don't think they required it to use. Liquid VPN setup is exactly the same. You just need to create a certificate for it and paste it in using the configuration file for OpenVPN once again. They do provide uh, OpenVPN files. So it's not just a certificate, but also some other commands. So it'll give you some uh, idea of how to set up everything else when you're doing this, when you get those OVPN file extensions. Once again, just setting up another client is where we have a new VPN here. Yep, and pay attention to the settings we use because you know some of the providers support compression, some of them don't. And for these three, we did have to fiddle with the settings a little bit to find the settings that uh, that they were compatible with. Liquid VPN and their OVPN file uh, specified which kinds of encryption to use. So we AES-256 and uh, SHA-512 were required for them. A little bit different than the other setups. And for this one, I think we picked uh, Kansas City as an endpoint. I think it was California. California. We've also got some custom options from the OVPN config as well. We're gonna to come to our interfaces and change the interface. Once again, we're using the PIA, but switching it over to the new client. And we've recycled our firewall and we've got another public IP address, that easy, handled by our router. Now this is not gonna anonymize you online. Yeah, you shouldn't have a false sense of security. This is, it's gonna change your IP address and not a whole lot else. There's a million other ways that you can be identified by your browsing habits or other things that you're doing on the internet. Websites that you visit. Exactly. Different kinds of things like that. It would also be possible to set up multiple VPNs. Like if you had a secure banking computer that you only used for internet banking that was running you know, a really secure version of Linux, you could set up that computer to only use a certain connection or a certain you know, VPN or a certain whatever. And you know that, that's something that you could do. But I mean, that's really complicated. You know, who wants to do that? But you've got the option now. You know how after having watched this video. You could totally set it up. And you keep in mind, the moment you log into a site using that new IP address, someone knows that you were using that IP address. Yeah. So we talked about setting up the proxy. You might keep a web browser for login sites and a web browser for anonymous browsing and do it that way. You never know when that crazy sysadmin is keeping track of every IP address your user <laughs> account has ever used. You just never know. So don't be overconfident, but this is definitely a step you should take if you wanna secure yourself. So let us know what you'd like to see next. PFSense has a ton of plugins and a ton of configuration options. There's a lot of really exciting stuff for packet filtering, for security, for, for doing other sorts of fun things. I think next, was probably setting up custom routes for games and Netflix to either bypass the VPN or maybe having only those services use the VPN, depending on what your goals are. Uh, but I, you know, I, we're curious to know what your thoughts are, or you know, after you've seen this and if you've set this up, what your experience was. If you have a different configuration for a different VPN provider, you know, maybe you want to share uh, any steps that were different. Generally, any provider that uses Open VPN will run with these setup steps, so I don't think you'll have too much problem there. It's just maybe a matter of protocols or IP addresses, but by and large, it should pretty much be the same. So let us know. Let us know in the comments. Let us know on the site at level1text.com, and we'll see you there.